You looking at me? You looking at me? You better not be looking at me. I'm telling you. Is he looking at me? You better not be looking at me. Uh-oh, he's looking at me. <laughs> Are you looking at me? Don't be looking at me. <laughs> you want to look at somebody, look at Jesus. <laughs> he's your example. You ever see how easy it is to kind of get off kilter and kind of focus in on the wrong subject and the wrong person at the wrong time for the wrong thing at the wrong way with the wrong attitude <laughs> I don't know maybe you don't have that problem he does he's always looking at me one of the few I let look at me but where and how we're supposed to look at is the Lord you see, Jesus entrusted himself to no man, for he knew what was in the heart of man. And if the Son of God didn't trust you... <laughs> uh, maybe you shouldn't trust me either. <laughs> but I know who you can trust. You see, you can trust in the Lord with all your heart. You can lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, you can acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Because... God intended us to help one another collectively. Personally, one-on-one, -on -one, yes, we should have, like, you know, maybe... Maybe a bro, we could say, Hey, bro, man, you know, you got this thing with the tongue. You know, you need to keep your tongue in your mouth because dragging it around on the ground, it just ain't too good. And we're meant to encourage one another in that way, in the sense of growing and developing and learning and kind of like butting heads. Christians aren't supposed to butt heads. Okay. Maybe. But you see, if you rub two stones together, they kind of rub off on each other. and They kind of create a little friction. But guess what? They also smooth out the stone. Just like the ocean waves. You know, as they keep coming in, constantly wearing you down. They turn your kind of rough edges into a round and round and round stone. <laughs> Somehow it applies to me. <laughs> My last name notwithstanding. But God has a way of doing that that we're meant to rub off on each other as iron sharpens iron and Likewise, we cause each other to grow in ways that you might not have thought of. So the next time you're looking at somebody and tell them what's wrong with them, remember, God's looking at you. I don't think God's looking down and saying what's wrong with you. Hmm. Now there's a thought. You mean to tell me that God isn't coming to me to tell me what's wrong with me, but that he might be coming to tell me what's right with me? Look at Sean. Oh. My. God. Yeah, your God. Your God loves you. <laughs> he isn't coming to tell you what's wrong. He's coming to show you what's right. <laughs> He's going to help you. <laughs> so... Get over it. You don't gotta look at people. You don't gotta pick a pastor and tear them apart. You don't gotta look at religion and go after it. You don't have to gnaw on fingers that are clawing way to the top. I gotta get to the top. I gotta be the best, righteous, most perfect Christian there is. After all, only one. There can be only one. We are the champions. No, we lift 
each other up. So, as much as this guy's a little obnoxious, I gotta lift him up. Because as we do, as we help each other up, as we walk with each other, as we talk with each other, we're doing it not just to the Lord, but we're doing it with the Lord, because you may be Jesus to a person you never expected. And they may think of you as being something special until they see the faults in you and they go, look at that, he blew it. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. He's got faults. We all do. I do. That's why I said, look that way. Look up. Look to Jesus. And you'll find that you don't have to look at each other to tear each other apart. You don't even have to look at each other to figure out what the faults are. You think we don't know? Huh. You think people don't know what's wrong with Christianity today? Yes, they do. What we do know is that if we allow ourselves to help each other, God can use us in a beautiful way, in a intimate way, in a tender way, to touch the lives of someone that you might not have thought of touching today. And you know what? They might just think you're perfect. <laughs> Boy, are they in for a surprise. I know. Because it's real easy to find fault, but it's a lot harder to find favor. The unblameable attitude, if, 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 thou remembrance that your brother has ought against you, <gasps> he's got ought on you, watch out, the ought will get you, Matthew 5.23. If when you come to the altar, there you remember that your brother has anything against you, not if you rake up something by a morbid sensitivityness, meaning, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so guilty, I need to find something. I know it's me, I know I did it, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I did this and I did that and I did everything else. I don't think that's what God had in mind. But if you remember, that is, if it is brought to your conscious mind by the Spirit of God, first, A, be reconciled to your brother. We're waiting for the next shoe to drop. No. You see, the first shoe drop is the shoe. First, be reconciled to your brother. That may take a while. That may take a long time. It could involve the rest of your life. But do you notice the word that's used is reconcile, not ask forgiveness and run your own way. <gasps> you got to forgive me, brother, because guess what? God said you got to forgive me, so tough, you're on your own. Oh, I'm gone. No, it says reconcile. You need to come to the place where your brother doesn't have that ought against you, doesn't have a reason to feel as though you slighted them doesn't have a reason to come to you and say, I'm looking at you, but rather has the thought in his head planted by you that one day you came to him and said, you know, I'm really sorry that I did what I did. There's no way that I could ever repay you, but please forgive me and in time, can't we reconcile this? Can't we work on this together? When you're ready, give me a call and let me know. Because then, I would like to talk to you about it more. Not just to ask your forgiveness and run off and do my own thing, but to somehow make it good to you. How can I make it good for you? Hmm. Suddenly, it's not about you being reconciled as much as it is trying to restore a brother that you've offended, isn't it? Because that is the point of what Jesus is saying. First, be reconciled to your brother. You might pay for a long time. You might have to take a few years to reconcile. You might have really done a number on somebody. Me? Mm 
Why? I'm so pure and innocent, I didn't do nothing. Good. But if God reminds you of it, He's watching you. I got my eyes on you. <laughs> Just remember who it is that has to remind you of it. If you remember, that is, if it is brought to your conscious mind by the Spirit of God, first be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Don't go to God first with your gift if you've already still got a problem with your brother. But rather, go fix your brother, and then come back and offer me your gift. Okay. Never object to the intense sensitiveness of the Spirit of God in you when He is educating you down to the very last scruple. He wants you to be that tender of heart. He wants to get to the bottom. But I kept it well so... But I kept it hid for so long. I've started a new life. I've been forgiven. I, 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 no, 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 no. It's not I. It's them. What did you do to them? Now, for me, I'll admit, even as I'm saying this, I'm thinking, Oh, man... My list is, you know what, it's worse than Santa Claus' list of checking it twice and getting it right. Because, you know what, I got a list that's so long, I may never get done with it. <laughs> and in my mind, I'd say, then don't take your gift to the altar. <laughs> well, it works for me. <laughs> or, when you know you've done so bad that you need to give it to God, you go, God, help me. What do you want me to do? Because why? Because you can't make it a religious thing. It has to be the Lord telling you. It has to be God showing you. It has to be trusting in the Lord with all your heart. Not leaning in your own noggin. Because guess what? When you're knocking it, you're beating your head against the wall when you try to do something that God didn't tell you to do. Because he didn't get them ready, so you're not ready. But when they're ready, and you're ready, and it's ready, you can go. And he'll tell you. First be reconciled to your brother. Our Lord's direction is simple. First be reconciled. Go back the way you came. Go the way indicated to you by the conviction given at the altar. Have an attitude of mind and a temper of soul to the one who has something against you that makes reconciliation as natural as breathing. You are the one that did it, so you are the one that needs to humble yourself and have the right attitude before that person so you can be reconciled. Jesus does not mention the other person. He says, you go. I'm looking at you. You go. I'm not going. <laughs> no, me, man. Where am I? There is no question of your rights. <laughs> The stamp of the saint is that he can waive his own rights and must obey the Lord Jesus Christ. Your rights is his privilege and his direction is your obedience. And then come and offer your gift. The process is clearly marked. First, the heroic spirit of self-sacrifice. Then the sudden checking by the sensitiveness of the Holy Spirit and the stoppage at that point of conviction, then the way of obedience to the Word of God, constructing an unblameable attitude of mind and temper to the one whom you have been in the wrong, then the glad, simple, unhindered offering of your gift to God. In other words, when you wrong someone, really, take care of it. Get right, get over with it, and then get on with it. Because if you get right, it's easier to get over it, and then it's easier to get on with it. But if you don't get it right, then they're going to get bitter, and they're going to get mad, and they're going to get you, and it's going to get back to you, and by way of the Holy Spirit, He's going to come back to you with His eyes on you. And He's going to say, Thank you for this beautiful... No, I'm sorry, I can't take this gift. Remember that time that you, uh, like, stomped on somebody? Well, 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 yeah, Lord, but... Didn't they deserve it? No. But, but, you were watching? Yes. But, but, 
you really want me to go talk to them? What do you think? Ah, gee whiz, just when I thought this Christian stuff was so simple. Man, that's uncomfortable. It's like, ick, humbling. <laughs> what were you thinking? You were going to be the pro quarterback? <laughs> the football team? We are the champions. <laughs> hey, water boy, bring me a towel. <laughs> I want to wash your feet. Boy, did I get that one backwards? I thought the water boy was giving out water. No, you're watching your brother's feet. You see, we're servants of all. We're meant to be humble. And if God can humble us to the point of ministering to one another in humility and tenderness, in gentleness and weakness, in the joy of the Lord and in the love of God, then you'll find that that person that you reconcile yourself to will be on fire for Jesus and want what it is that brought you to the place where you were willing to be so changed from your prideful ways that you would go to them in the most humble of ways and want to be restored to them in the most personal way that God could ever imagine for you that you could never do on your own. Imagine that. Restore. Reconcile. And redeem your brother to you. So that together, together, together in love, you and your brother, you and the one that you've offended, you and that one person will form a bond so tight that you can't even tear it apart again. And no matter what happens, they'll look at you and say, you know, I remember when that guy was a real jerk. But you know what I think of him now? I think you are right. So I'm watching you to do that which is right. Because it doesn't matter who you trust in. Because the Lord said, don't lose your own understanding. But let him direct you. And man, oh man, oh man, will the Holy Spirit make you sensitive to those times. Where you really can touch another person's heart. And you can just fold it in your hand and just love them with the love of Jesus. You can. Yes, you can.